Watch, let's read that passage. Let's read that passage. 2 Corinthians, verse 9. I'm sorry, chapter 9. But before we get there, uh, let me give you a little context. In chapter 8, Paul was writing about the financial generosity of the Macedonian church and how they gave above and beyond their ability to further the gospel message. All right, so here we are, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning in verse 6. Paul says, remember this. In other words, don't forget it. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Listen, church, it's a principle. It's simple. In other words, you cannot be stingy and expect a generous harvest. This is not talking about just church giving. This is talking about your lifestyle. A good example is this. Here's a little checkup for you, okay? How do you tip your waiters at the restaurant? You complain about everything, but they did their job. And then you leave them like 50 cents or something. Do you want to be refreshed? Refresh somebody. I, I, I'm, listen, one of the things that I always do when, when we ever go to restaurants, from the very get-go, I try to sow seeds into my waiter. Wow, you're really good. You're very articulate. Thank you for bringing my water so quick. I'm telling you, you will get more out of that waiter than you ever thought. People need encouraged. People are getting beat up all the time. Listen, Judah, the power of life and death is in our tongue. Begin to speak life to somebody. <laughs> then when they serve you good, they did well, don't leave 50 cents in a track. Leave the track in your purse or your wallet or wherever. Y'all with me? Mm. Sowing and reaping is a seasonal cycle. For instance, if you knew a farmer and his wife said, Honey, I'd like to have some corn on the cob for dinner tomorrow night. Great. He goes out in his garden and he plants some seed. He comes out tomorrow. Where's the corn? You understand? Giving is cyclical. It's on a cycle. I mean, to think like that is silly. My rent is due tomorrow. Let me put an extra dollar in the offering today. Sowing takes faith, takes patience, takes consistency. Now there have been instances of financial return in a heartbeat because of a rhema word that was spoken to you, but hear me when I tell you, it's not the norm, and it's not the word, the written word of God. So these charlatans are telling you to, you know, sow a seed today, your family's gonna get saved next week. There's a Greek word for that, baloney, right? Now, once again, there have been instances when there's an instant financial return, but that is because of a rhema word that was spoken to your spirit. All right, let's read. 2 Corinthians, verse 7. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly, not under compulsion. Here's our verse. For God loves a cheerful giver. So verse uh, 7 states that you give what you decided. In other words, you've already purposed. You plan your giving. It's in your budget. You don't give under compulsion. You don't give reluctantly. The, you, you know, those, when you give that way, is, it creates a grudge, grudgeful giving. God loves a cheerful giver. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love those who give grudgingly. Now watch this, y'all. I heard a pastor one time say, if you're going to give grudgingly, keep your offering. Not here. No, no, that doctrine doesn't fly here. 
That is some bad theology, y'all. If you want to put a $100 bill on that with a sour face, honey, you go ahead and do it. You just help yourself. Y'all with me? You give grudgingly. You're the one that's going to miss the blessing. We will still be able to be a conduit and bless somebody else, even though you didn't. Come on, y'all. Watch this. What this verse is stating is that God loves the attitude of the cheerful giver. He's blessed to see his children cheerfully give because they know who their provider is. Let, let me give you a, a real life example here. You know, I, I know my kids squirm when I use them in examples, but this is my story, right? When our boys were little, Mike and Caleb, I don't know, six years old, seven, five, so, somewhere in that age range, they did what a lot of kids do. They went and built a lemonade stand, right, out on the street. People were coming by. Our neighborhood was still under construction, so a lot of construction. A guy would come and get a little thing of lemonade and hand him a $5 bill. They were just to bless the kids. You know what I mean? And so they're, you know, getting up a stack of money, and all of a sudden, the other neighborhood kids start coming and hanging around. And pretty soon, <laughs> Micah is handing the money out to everybody. As he was giving, mom and I were watching out the window, loving our cheerful, giving son. Watch this now, church. Our boys, even at five, six, seven years old, knew something deep within them that they may not have even realized. Watch. The lemonade they gave away, the cups they gave away, the water that they used, the cash that they give, gave away didn't belong to them in the first place. It belonged to the Father. Their thought was, watch this, it doesn't matter how much we give away, Father has plenty because my daddy owns a cattle of a thousand hills. There is no exhausting his resources. I wish somebody in this house Hi, would give I'm our Pastor father Mike a praise in here. And I hope you enjoyed today's short word. If you liked and agreed with this message, please hit the share button and share it with everyone you know. Together, we could proclaim this gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Now, if you'd like to watch the message in its entirety, simply click on the link below. God bless you, my friend, and we hope to see you here next time as together we go beyond.